This is Dr. Rex Hamilton, director of the UCLA Laser Refractive Center. Today I want to talk to you about the various laser procedures we have available to correct your vision to reduce your dependence on glasses and contact lenses. It's basically an alphabet soup and you've probably seen these terms before. PRK is photorefractive keratectomy. LASIK is laser in situ keratomalusis. And the new one is called SMILE, small incision lenticule extraction. We're gonna kinda of go through each one of these in detail. The PRK procedure involves removing the surface layer of cells, which are like skin cells from the cornea. That's followed by the laser to do the reshaping, which is customized to your correction. And then a contact lens is placed on the eye. The total procedure takes about 15 minutes to do both eyes. The contact lens will stay on for four days. That's how long it takes the surface cells to heal. During that time, it's intermittently light sensitive, tearing, sandy, gritty feeling in the eye, and the vision's gonna fluctuate. The vision improves fairly rapidly once we take the contact lens out. The contact lens will be taken out on the fourth day after surgery, but it's about a week before patients feel comfortable driving in general. The light sensitivity, the scratchiness lasts while the contact lens is in. Usually the second post-operative day is the most uncomfortable and the vision can actually take a drop on that second post-operative day. PRK in general does have uh, some risk of dry eye that uh, most patients will experience for three to six months. In unusual situations, it can last up to one year. PRK has been around for more than 25 years. PRK is typically used in patients who have corneas that are on the thinner side, which does not allow us to perform LASIK because we don't have enough tissue to work with to perform the flap and the correction for the vision. It's appropriate for patients with nearsightedness and astigmatism and farsightedness and astigmatism. LASIK was created to shorten the recovery time that was experienced from PRK. LASIK involves using a laser to create a flap. The flap is reflected back and the, la the other laser is then used to do the reshaping the same way it's used in PRK. But now when we reposition the flap, the surface is essentially intact. And so it's a very fast recovery time. The eye is light sensitive for about four or five hours while the edge of that flap heals. We typically suggest patients go home and sleep through that time. Vision is excellent on post-operative day one, and patients can drive themselves in for the post-operative appointment. The vision stabilizes very quickly. Within several days, the vision is really at the point it will end up as the final vision. The light sensitivity, as I mentioned, lasts for a very brief period of time. This is why LASIK has become so popular over the PRK procedure. It does have associated with it the same dry eye risks that PRK has, and on average, patients have dryness for three to six months following the LASIK procedure. PRK and LASIK are both appropriate for patients that are nearsighted and with astigmatism, uh, which is a, a football shape to the front of the eye. LASIK is the most commonly used procedure for nearsightedness and astigmatism and farsightedness and astigmatism. We are limited to some level with higher corrections with LASIK because we need room for the flap. We have to have enough corneal tissue to create the flap and perform the laser correction for the vision. The newer procedure is called SMILE and involves using a single laser to create a contact lens shaped piece of material within the cornea. A small tunnel incision is also created with the laser and then that contact lens shaped piece of material is removed through that small tunnel incision. The procedure is quite rapid, lasting about 10 minutes. The discomfort, the scratchiness of the eye lasts for only a few hours. The eye can be light sensitive for a few days. The vision is excellent on post-operative day one, usually about 90% of the full correction. The remaining 10% can take several days to settle in. The great thing about SMILE is it is minimally invasive, allows us to treat higher corrections of nearsightedness, and typically results in a shorter duration of dry eye than we would see with a LASIK or PRK procedure. So SMILE is very nice for patients that have pre-existing dry eye the most important point here is that we have uh, all of these procedures available and we look forward to seeing you at the UCLA Laser Refractive Center to undergo a comprehensive examination and determine which of these amazing procedures is the most appropriate for your individual situation.